so there we go. Sail and Explore the Delta presented by me. Um, so we'll start with what kind of tools do you need, right? So um, the first one is a chart book of the Bay and the Delta. Um, you can just run over to West Marine. Uh, you can get the Map Tech uh, WPB 1210-03. And there is a great, um, just a great bound um, waterproof copy of that chart. It's great. It has nice insets and you can go ahead and take a look at that. Um, you'll want to also if you know, get a chart plotter. I use Navionics um, and I will manually chart all of my courses of the Delta and really anywhere. Um, you can use the one that you have on your boat and um, you know there's iNavX, uh, things like that. You'll want to have a handheld VHF um, or something that you can um, you know, access very quickly because ships do go up the Delta and you'll want to um, be able to converse with them when you need to. Um, and then you'll want to get some plotting tools. So a hand bearing compass. Um, you'll want to have binoculars. I would highly recommend a pen and a piece of paper. And um, if you want to start kind of measuring out distances and actually um, charting the course up there, you'll want to grab your parallel rulers and your uh, dividers. All right. So if you're going to be using a um, navigation or a chart plot or any kind of tool like that, you'll want to make sure that your um, if you decide to use the manual or like, I'm sorry, the auto um, routing feature, you want to double and triple check it, make sure that it doesn't take you over, you know, kind of cross corners and take you into very shallow water um, because the bay is, or the delta is very shallow. Um, you want to make sure that um, you're not going like if it auto routes you, you can do like a really direct route, but um, again, it might take you in some really shallow areas. So I do always go um, with a manual um, uh, charting process. You want to make sure that you have enough you know, room under your keel. Um, the groundings are going to be mostly, if you do go around, you're going to be in mud um, and the, the flood might sometimes help lift you off. Um, and if it is ebbing, then you might end up um, just kind of stuck down there. So you want to just be really careful when you are planning your trip that you're going with the tides and that you are going in deep enough water. Uh, you want to make sure that you're going really slow um that you are not just kind of you know powering through it um if you get stuck in mud oftentimes it's um best to just stop and try to back out as best you can um you also want to be very aware in the shallow areas there's a lot of um you know reeds and lots of like you know sea life and um different kinds of vegetation so when you are um, motoring in those shallow areas, you want to try and steer clear of that kind of, um, the kind of stuff that will get stuck in your propeller and in your, um, just in every place that you don't want it. Um, you do want to watch out for ships. So, um, these ships, as you can see, they go from the San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay entrance, the Golden Gate Bridge, and they'll go all the way up to Sacramento and via the uh, San Joaquin River. Um, you want to be uh, on high alert for them. Oftentimes when you see them and you're going up the Delta, it's pretty flat there. So you'll see it coming from quite a ways away. Um, and the channels are very, very narrow. So you'll just want to be really careful uh, and really plan, plan ahead. When you see one, um, start thinking about how you're going to avoid it um, when the time comes. Um, the couple times that I've gone up there, you've had to, I've had to really kind of get out of the channel almost, um, and just kind of hug the edge of the river to really stay out of their way. All right. So, um, the biggest, and so along the lines of things that you're going to have to watch out for, you've got a whole bunch of, um, bridges. And you have drawbridges, 
fixed bridges, and then you also have low hanging wires and things like that. So in your chart, you'll wanna find the page that has all of the um, title information for these bridges. Um, they have the location and they have the, the mean higher high water um, vertical clearance and then the high water and the mean low as well. And so for every location that you're at, you'll want to pull up your tides app um, and make the conversions. You'll want to also understand how tall your mast is, um, even if that means um, and include it, even if that means going up the mast, dropping down, down that um, measuring tape to figure out exactly how high it is, you'll want to take into account any, um, you know, windexes or antennas that are sticking out on the top. Most of them are pretty high. They're definitely high enough for a 30 foot boat, um, but you'll definitely, you'll want to triple check this and want to know the under and understand um, the height of your mass and then how deep your boat draws um, just in general. All right. All right, so wherever you find a bridge, you are gonna want to look uh, closely either on Navionics and read all the information that you have. And you'll also wanna find the notes about each bridge. And here we have the Carquinas Bridge. There's two uh, fixed bridges. Um, it tells you the horizontal clearance, right? So 998 feet. And then you have your vertical clearance, right? Um, obviously, we're most worried about that vertical clearance, right? But 146 feet and uh, 132 feet um, is pretty significant. And um, most sailing vessels will be able to clear that. All right, so then another little note here is that most of those uh, lift bridges, they'll go ahead and include the up and down to the vertical information, right? So in this um, image here, we've got the three mile slew lift bridge, right? So you have your horizontal clearance and then your vertical clearance and when it's up, when it's down. And um, we also wanna take into account those overhead power cables, um, those are just giving you the uh, vertical clearance. And again, you just wanna really navigate very carefully and uh, make sure that you're sailing in the middle of the channel um, as best as you can and make sure that you are um, paying attention. The bottom of this uh, image here, we have an overhead power cable and it's giving you your, uh, clearance. Um, at 108 feet. All right. I'll just check the chat really quick. We have any questions? I'm not seeing anything right so now. Far. It's all quiet. Cool. All right. So here's a nice overview of the delta. Uh, we've got uh, the, you know, entrance over here by Richmond and underneath the Richmond Bay Bridge. We go in here to the San Pablo Bay. Um, you're going to go through the um, strait here. You've got Venetia and Vallejo. You can uh, pop off to Napa. And then you've got the... Um, San Joaquin River and all these different basins here. We've got um, Sacramento over here um, on the left. So there's like 750,000 like acres or something of water here. And there's also, I want to say it's like somewhere around like 100 or maybe like 150 different yacht clubs um, or sorry, marinas that you can visit. And then there's a whole bunch of yacht clubs that are up the Delta as well. Um, right now, my best advice is if you are going to plan a trip, make sure that you call ahead and plan ahead. Um, I definitely, this uh, presentation originally takes you up to Owl Harbor, and it actually says on Google that it's closed, um, and it said permanently closed, but I ended up contacting them, and they are open. Um, you'll also want to be really uh, cognizant of how many 
slips are available, guest slips, and um, you know you want to call ahead to book and reserve. Uh, make sure that they have the appropriate length uh, or uh, slip size, and that the slip in the marina can accommodate the uh, draft of your boat. All right. All right, so here's San Pablo Bay. So this is just at the very beginning of our route, right? We've already sailed from wherever we're going, from Alameda or from uh, uh, Sausalito. We've gone um, underneath the Richmond Bay Bridge and we're in San Pablo Bay. So you can see here that the Delta, sorry, the um, Bay has the channel here. And as you're kind of working your way through the channel, it's fairly deep on, either side. However, if you've done any cruising or racing up there, you'll know that it does get very, very shallow on the very outer edges. And if you just look up here, you can see that we've got um, three feet, right? Four feet, seven feet. Uh, so you want to make sure that you stay, if you're going all the way up, you want to make sure that you stay in the, um, in the channel, right? Um, what do we have here? So a question regarding have, water levels by season. Um, yeah, so right in the spring season, you're going to have more water coming in, right? When all of that water is coming down from the Delta. Storms will actually really affect the like heavy rainy seasons here in the Bay Area will really affect that water level as well. Um, and you'll want to um, just again, kind of take it as it comes, make sure that you're monitoring your depth sounder. You can buy a depth sounder at West Marine. You can go ahead and um, just pick one up and they find they're like fairly accurate. And then I like to use my tide times and it gives you the readings off of all the buoys um, that they get those readings off of. So that's a great, um, one of the best tools, right? Is just kind of understand what you're what you're doing as you're going and monitor. Yep. There's okay. also a question regarding power line heights and how often they're updated. Oh, that's a good question. So the chart, you'll want to make sure that your chart is. Uh, you'll just want to check the um, published date. So the chart that I have, the physical copy, is like I think it's like 2016 or something like that. Um, I'm not sure how often they are um, published or like checked and things like that. And I think Navionics has like one set. I don't know how often they actually update it. So, but I do, you know, every time that I've gone up there, there have been power lines, but they're kind of just at the same height as the, um, as well, some of the bridges and things like that. So you'll just, again, be very cautious and make sure that you're reading all the fine print on your chart. And there we go, Mark Jordan, he's got some great insight there. You wanna check with the local marinas and yacht clubs um, and they might have some information for you. All right, cool. So when you are navigating through San Pablo Bay, you will see container ships and the container ships are restricted to this channel. They cannot leave that channel, uh, but as a uh, recreational vessel, you are allowed to leave. Um, you can get out of, you have to get out of the way of any container ship that's coming or going, um, but you're not restricted to the channel. You can go, I think I saw a little chat question there. You can go out of it, but you just wanna be really, really aware of your depth. And you can see in this image that, um, you know, just kind of to the, um, I guess the south side of the channel, we've got 22 feet, 15 feet, you know, and then off the outer edge, kind of as you get close to the lines, there's, um, it gets a little bit shallower. You'll also be wanting to be really aware of like ruins and things like that all over the Delta. Um, so again, pull out that chart and, um, you know, I would cross check the physical chart with the Navionics and just make sure that you're not gonna run right over something. Um, as you kind of go through this, um, this channel, you can take a left turn and you can get up to Mare Island uh, and the Vallejo Yacht Club. Um, and then that will, that's a great spot for the first kind of overnight, right? You can stop here and it is a 
awesome little yacht club. I love the Vallejo Yacht Club. I have not been to, um, there's one more yacht club up there or one more marina up there I have not um, been to, but lots of space. All right. All right, so just a little bit of a note uh, for the Petaluma River. I have not been up there since they dredged it, but apparently it is possible. If you have any, if we have any Petaluma Yacht Club or people who live up in Petaluma and go frequent the area, definitely pipe up here. I heard that it is dredged and it is possible to go all the way up the yacht club, um, all the way up the river to the yacht club up there. So could be a super fun little trip, nice little jaunt up there. Um, one little note, actually, I'm gonna go back one slide to the San Pablo Bay, is that this area, um, even though you're kind of working your way north, um, it can be incredibly windy. Um, it's really shallow, so you can get quite a bit of fetch. And um, on any given day, especially when that current is going against the wind, um, it can be a really wet and wild ride. And I've been up there just so many times that, you know, sometimes it's wet and wild and sometimes it's actually just like a big motor fest. Um, there's also been a lot of racers can tell you that it's a nice, smooth spinnaker ride all the way uh, down to Vallejo or even to Venetia. Um, but this log back is a serious log. Uh, so you'll want to kind of be prepared for that as well. Because even though we're going up into warmer waters, um, we're kind of just like right on the edge of where it can really get nasty up there. Um, this is probably, you, know, you can definitely sail all the way up through here. You can sail for quite a ways up the Delta, um, but the deeper we get into the Delta, the more that you will be motoring. So you'll want to make sure that you are very um, well stocked, make sure that you've got some fuel um, if you're not planning to stop along the way. All right, the Petaluma River. Um, and then you can head on up to the Napa. Napa. Um, again, I have not been up there since um, it was allegedly dredged. Uh, you can go up, there's a yacht, a yacht club and a marina. Call ahead, I believe they have um, slippage for maybe like three or four boats up there. Um, and it is not super deep. So uh, you'll just wanna go ahead and plan that and make sure that you're looking really closely at your route. Let's see. Cool, so we have a uh, little note here that the Pet Petaluma turning basin has not been dredged and it's super shallow. So thank you very much, Alice. All right. Okay. So here's a um, an image of the bridge that's in that uh, right past the Vallejo Yacht Club um, up the Napa River, and it actually will tell you what the vertical height of the bridge is um, when you're going underneath it. And so um, right now, in this image, is saying that it's 62 feet. Uh, which is not, you know, super generous, but um, it's enough to get uh, by with most, you know, 30 to 40 foot boats. But you'll want to look at these kinds of things because there's some real time information. All right. All right, and so then you'll, you know, want to be looking for all the different Signs. This one has the um, you know phone number for this drawbridge right here. Um, you can also look at your chart, and it will tell you um, how to hail the different bridges. Mm. All right. So as we work our way further into the up the delta, we're going through the Carquina Strait, right? So on the right side, um, sorry, on the left side of the. Um, image, that's the Napa River, and you can take that, go up there, and that's where the Vallejo Yacht Club is. But as you continue down, you're going to um, proceed on through Benicia. Um, there is plenty of water here, plenty of room, pretty wide. Um, and then you can also stop, stop at Benicia, which is a great little spot as well. The Yacht Club is uh, located right at the marina and you can um, walk from the Benicia Yacht Club and that marina there uh, to downtown Benicia. 
and it's a nice little place to have dinner and um, hang out for a little while until you're ready to sail back out. The one thing I do want to note, um, and I don't, I don't know if everyone's familiar with Navionics, but as we're kind of working our way through this presentation, you'll see all these tiny little pink sailboats in little circles. Those are marinas. Um, so you can see as we go, there's plenty of places to stop. Um, and you can, um, you know, contact a lot of these marinas. They have uh, on the charts, you can go ahead and look up where, where their lat long is and their phone numbers and things like that. So you can call and plan. All right, so here we go. We're gonna continue on. So I'm just gonna check the chat real quick. Yes, totally agree, Melissa. Love Venetia. All right, so a couple of fun sites that I think everybody, um, not everybody, but anyone who's been up to Venetia has seen. And this is a famous, famous image um, of an old sugar plant. And this is the um, site that I'm always looking for when we're kind of at the end, at the end of the races that go up to Venetia, because you know the end is near. Um, and this looks like it was a really calm day really beautiful with just enough wind to have a nice little spinnaker run down to Venetia. All right, so here's just a little bit of a closer look. Um, this image is just showing you, right, the depth here. Um, we do have some underwire, underwater cables and things like that. Um, I don't believe that any of these cause any problems, but if you are worried, if you have a boat that does draw a deeper keel, then this might be the end of the road for you. Uh, but you'll want to check that out. Sure. Yes. Do you mind if I ask a question? So, because I've seen this on my Navionics. So see like um, at the entrance of that port, well back, either one of those. Yeah, that little circle you just had the mouse over. What is that? Go up slightly. Um, oh, right, right there. there. Yeah. So those are all rocks. Those are all rocks. Um, rocks. That okay. little... Yeah, so that one, right, you usually are looking for the little dotted circle um, or the little football um, with kind of like the laces on it. I don't think I see one in here, but those are, oh, here's one right here, right near this line. So those are underwater wrecks and things like wow. that. You can see that these rocks, they're underwater, but they could cause like a problem at low tide. And you might even be able to see some of these. Um, if you look here, right, it's like three feet right there and then it's starting to get green. So it's probably really marshy right here. So you don't want to get too close. And then we also have some more uh, symbols right here, right? That has, it's like a little shipwreck. And you can actually see this shipwreck um, when it's like extra low, like super low, low. I think in Sausalito is probably one of the places where I've seen the most kind of things like that. But in some of those big tides that you have, if you just go look out in some of these marshy areas, you might be able to see some of the wrecks. A um, couple of other little, um, symbols, right? We've got the fueling station right there, little, little gas, gassing up station right there. And then we have, um, like a restaurant and why they choose to just put this restaurant there. I don't know, but <laughs> there's definitely, I think a few more on the other sides of the, the river, but yeah, you know, if you, one cool feature that I really, I absolutely love about Navionics is you can take your little cursor and you can scroll over everything and you can actually, um, get more information and on all of these buoys, if they're in like emitting any data um, or like sending off any data, you can actually read it, which is really cool, very helpful. Um, and, you know, it comes with a little bit of a word of caution. You don't want to keep your head buried in your Navionics. Um, but if you want to quick prep, I think it's a great way. All right. So then, oops, if I go backwards. So yeah, here you go. This is just the entrance of the Venetia Marina. And it's actually pretty shallow. Um, I definitely have had a couple of times where I've had to wait out the, the tide uh, to make sure that we could get out and um, get home safely. All right. So we've got a couple of bridges that you're gonna pass um, after Venetia, right? And you'll just want to make sure that you're, these are the Susine Point 
um, the bridges right here. And the nice little close up of the horizontal clearance, right? 440 feet, and then the vertical clearance. Um, there's a couple of them here, right? So uh, another fixed bridge uh, with 153 feet. So um, even if you got those mixed up, because <laughs> they're very similar, uh, you can definitely get on them. Right. Oh, I'm just going to. And stuck in the mud happens. So again, you just want to, you know, we have plenty of room down here in the middle um, of the, the river, but the closer you get to the shoreline, it can really get um, pretty shallow. And then here we have like an obstruction, right, with our little dotted circle and it says 37 feet. So that gets to a, um, let's say a pretty shallow area, although like in the whole general area there, it's not too bad, but you'll want to keep your axe out. Uh, one thing that I like to do when I'm planning my trip out to the Delta is actually plot my course and then I write down all of the uh, buoys that I'm going to see along the way. So if you remember at the very beginning of the presentation, I had the tools that you would use. Um, I would use those tools, the piece of paper and the pencil to write it all down. And then as I'm going down the Delta and the further we get, um, your buoys are not as, um, they're not as familiar. They don't have the same types of buoys for everything that we see out in the bay, those giant like, you know, metal structures and things like that. Um, but you can still see them and you should write down every single number and perhaps the um, lighting sequence that you might, might see um, if you were going at dusk or something like that or into the night so that you can cross them out as you go. Um, and a lot of them, as you get closer and closer to um, our endpoint here, the, the outpost, you're going to start seeing more um, day markers. And the difference here, right, is we have a buoy. This is a green buoy right here. It's a little diamond. Um, and that means that it's floating. So it's in enough water that it's floating. And then we have these little exclamation points here, um, this little red uh, dot, uh, red like arm, I guess, with a little uh, black dot. And that tells you that it is actually um, stuck in the mud. So um, it is not floating and it is probably a giant metal uh, piece of piping that you don't want to run into. So you'll just want to keep eyes out for that. All right. Yeah, we do have a good question here from Linda about Navionics. Um, I, yeah, I, you can use it on a laptop. I actually have it pulled up here in case you want to zoom in on anything, but um, you do have to have that Wi-Fi, right? So um, I actually have a, an iPad that I use and it has like a nice, um, you know, waterproof screen and everything like that or case. And I find that that's pretty easy. And I actually do just keep my, I might even use my phone more often because I only take the iPod out for longer trips. So I use my phone all the time with Navionics. Um, highly recommend. And I have not used iNavX. So if anyone has any um, kind of insight there, we can definitely um, take some time to talk about it at the end. All right, so we're continuing on. Are we going backwards? What are we doing? Um, cool, so this is again, this is just like your, your note about the Union Pacific Bridge. Um, right, the lift span is 70 feet above the mean higher high water when it's down, and then when it's raised, it's 135 feet, right, um, and the horizontal clearance is going to be 291, and it's so plenty of room to pass by on the sides, uh, given the depth, uh, but you'll want to be, um, you know, just aware of what's going on when you're going underneath it. A lot of these bridges, the people at the top that actually will pull it up, they, um, I've been doing it for so long that if you hail them on the radio, they might just be like, you're fine, just go through. Even if you're nervous, they are probably gonna just tell you like, you're okay, your boat's small, it's fine, you're gonna go through. Um, then you also wanna be aware that there are bridges, there are uh, trains that go over some of these bridges. And so they might not be able to pull that um, bridge up to allow you to pass until the train goes by. So you'll want to kind of make a plan there. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's some place where you could get some sort of schedule, but uh, there is also plenty of room 
in these areas in front of the bridges that you could anchor or just kind of get yourself into a little bit of a holding pattern if you needed to. All right. Oops. All right. So we are um, working our way further into the Susin uh, uh, Bay and into the you know San Joaquin River West. Um, the main channel is down here. It's on kind of just like the south of the area. You do have some places where you can go up the delta a little bit further. Lots of little um, places to anchor. You want to be, again, really careful. Make sure you're not anchoring on top of anything. Um, and you do want to consider the currents when um, if you're going to decide to go and anchor somewhere in any of these little islands or um, tuck away anywhere. You'll... Um, want to make sure that if you have a stronger current that um, you have a really good holding um, and then you want to a plan accordingly. So you might do a bow and a stern um, and then you might even do some sort of like med more kind of setup where you have something um, attached to something on land if you can get there. All right, so we're just working our way in. Um, just be looking for all these different buoys and um, all, right. all right, so here's Brown's Island and um, you can, um, let's see, you can actually go all the way up and around. That's kind of the long way. Um, and it is for a time when you have enough time and that you um, are sure of how much your boat is gonna draw. But otherwise, you're gonna go ahead and just stay low, go through the New York Slough and um, head on through. Right. Okay, so there's our junction buoy <laughs> for the New York Slough. Right, so the green on top is telling you to keep it to the left as you're heading inland. Um, so you'll look for that and we, do you have seals that make their way up here? Believe it or not. Yeah. Okay. All right, and here is a great picture of um, a tanker coming down the Delta, right? And this is like fairly uh, wide. This is actually a really wide shot. Um, in some places, the further you go, like it just kind of starts winding and there's that, that channel gets narrower and narrower. So you want to really be looking out. But as you can see, um, that that tanker kind of just looks like it's sitting right there on the horizon. I mean, the, there's nothing to kind of block the way, no hills, maybe a couple of bushes, but um, that's only if it's really far away. Uh, this boat that we're on is uh, one of Modern's boats, and it's actually a boat that we take um, out onto the ocean. And she has a pretty tall mast. I think it's somewhere around like 43 feet. Um, and then the keel is about I think it's like six and a half. So she's fine up here. Um, and um, yeah, that's all. Kira? Yes. Do the um, does the commercial traffic move at the same rate like it does in the bay, or do they slow down at all? Um, I find that they slow down. There's definitely a lot of like twists and turns and things uh, that they have to navigate, and they can't move. They're not nimble, right? So we have to really they have to really uh, slow down. Uh, but they are still going, you know, faster than your boat is going to be going. So I would say they're probably going maybe. 10 to 10 knots, you know, uh, give or take a couple and you're going, you know, five or six. So you'll just want to be careful there. All right. All right. Just like another kind of look at, um, the three mile, mile slew, uh, you can cut in through here and then this, um, is getting us closer to our destination. And so if you wanted to, you could follow, right? You can actually go, I believe, around here and kind of go over the top and then connect. Um, but you can also go through the three-mile slew. And again, it's very shallow. 
you want to make sure that you're watching um, your depth and looking for um, you know, any kind of obstructions. You're going to go around a nice sharp turn. And then you're going to get over here next to Twitchell Island and um, just continue on. And this actually would eventually take you up to Owl Harbor. You can go all the way up here, some really cute little places um, to tuck in. And then we are going to end up, um, oh, sorry, again, okay, we've got a bridge here. <laughs> so when you peel off from that main channel and you decide to go through the three mile, um, we've got a bridge right here. So you'll just want to, again, just call ahead if you need to, uh, but be aware. There is a crane that is uh, left behind there at some point. Um, that is going to be a good indicator that you're almost there. Um, and a kind of cool sight of the Delta. And then, okay, so if you continue on and you decide not to take a left to um, Owl Harbor, you're going to get to the Delta Bay Marina. And that is where the Peninsula Yacht Club's um, outpost is. So it's up in here. And I actually have not been here. So it'd be really good to hear about kind of what kind of um, accommodations you guys have up there and any kind of insight you have into good anchorages and anything like that. Um, I have a picture here from Navionics. So if you go up to the left and kind of go up here, that's where Owl Harbor is, is up in the corner. And then um, I could not find the Delta Bay Marina right here. Uh, but Google said it was here. Um, and there is um, another marina right there. So that is actually the last slide. I have some more information about our um, about the webinar series that's coming up. But um, that's about it. So